السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Today I'll be speaking about a topic that is very close to my heart, and that is the liberation of women in Islam. Now you may be asking, why is this topic so close to my heart? Now, often people use this, yeah. People say that Islam is like Hasha for this um not allowing women to actually interact with the world. Actually, what Islam is doing is actually el- the opposite. And here is why. Here is why I think that's the case. It's because of the fact that prior to Islam, yeah, women would actually be used as male toys, toys to play with, yeah, as in like they they use them for their own pleasure, yeah. Back in the Arab times, back in times, they would use the slave girls to dance and do all sorts of things with them, all sorts of haram things, all sorts of haram things, sorts. Islam came. And each of these women came, became Muslims. They all had certain rights. The Islam gave them rights. Each of these rights, yeah, involved a woman being protected. One of the things which I find very sad, yeah, which very very sad in feminist groups is that they're not addressing them much enough. Is the fact of um. That how should I put this? You know, they were like, yeah, woman right, woman right, woman right, yeah. But they're not really looking at the part, yeah. The, by by doing this, by making women wear less less clothing, less and even less clothing. What they're doing is basically turning that woman, turning woman, yeah, into a male pleasure. If, like a few years back here, yeah, when you go outside, if you hunt ten years, ten years, twenty years ago, if you went outside, yeah, I'm pretty sure you'd see people are well covered. Even in hot weather, they'll be well covered, not fully covered, like yeah, but they'll be very good. They wear, alhamdulillah, a good amount of clothing. Yeah? At least they would cover the main parts, a lot of most of it, yeah. And you, everyone. Now you go outside, you see everyone nudity and. And men stare at them. Why? Because they become toys. And I don't. Th- I think this is very bad. Yeah. When Islam, it just just protects a woman in all ways, in like, in every single way, in every single way possible. Protects and saves. One thing which I would like to address here is like is the makeup. Yeah. Um. That last week, I think a few weeks back, a few months, a few months back, a few weeks back, I watched a video, yeah, of a sister convert, how is sister convert to Islam, and uh, it's actually very interesting to see the fact that um, this sister, before she was like became Muslim, she spent hours in her house before leaving the house, hours, like I mean hours, one two hours, yeah, just putting makeup on, just just to choose a dress. Right, and she felt like how should I put this encaged because she was in her like when she was explaining her how she converted to Islam, she explains that um she would stay hours and hours and when she would go out people would just stare at her and do all sorts of things. Yeah. And I think that's that's the sad that's that's the sad thing. Because um like you don't want how many people, how many of us would like to just be stared at? Yeah, you go outside and all you've been doing is just being stared at. Yeah, it's good by the way, because you're wearing something a bit provocative, I would say. Yeah, provocative, very. And you know, going back to the story, the sister now she met her brother, she started learning more and more. And when she became Muslim, alhamdulillah, she, her, she says that she didn't feel the necessity. She didn't feel the like urge to wear something proper to wear to please anyone. She didn't feel that urge to pour like fifty layers of makeup. She didn't uh, feel anything. She just all she had to do was pour in her burqa, pour in the cup, and done, finished. She was ready to go outside. The same applies to men. 
Okay, man should be doing this. There shouldn't be like just spending hours just putting the right perfume on, cologne on, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it, or the right ether on, and wearing them proper nice hat. No, just what be simple. Dress up for Allah. Yeah. Dress up for Allah. Prepare. Allah. Allah sees everything. Yeah. I remember that. So if you are trying to impress someone, it's not really good. Another thing I would like to say is when in big Africa, in Africa, when the colonials came to Africa to like conquer it, to colonize it, what happened is that they saw these African people, the African people were covered in leaves, feathers, yeah, and traditional Africa, traditional like tribal clothing, yeah, animal skins and all this. And what they say to them is, you are in the past. What does it do? What do they say to them? You are in the past. Why? Because what they were wearing is like some some something that they would wear in um, stone ages. So they said, cover yourselves. They gave them clothing. They're wearing. Now what they say to them, if you go, that like, you are in the past. Why? You are in the past. They're taking clothing away from them now. Like, I'm saying to them, by taking away clothing, are they, t are they trying to bring in are they progressing towards the future or are they progressing or are they progressing towards the past because towards the past I'm 100% sure right that at the time they didn't have as much clothing right so then so what's this why why are people like to wear less why Islam is very strict in what he wears and in the fact that what woman should do as well okay you should be wearing something modest you shouldn't be showing off your legs or whatever your body because you shouldn't be doing that it's very bad number one number two increases the chance of rape I'm sorry but I have to say straightforward increases the amount of rape chances of rape or being raped and and by doing so by wearing a bur if a woman wears a burqa covers her face no, not only she's been protected by rape, but she's also seen as a person. Rather, she's she's like um, judged as a person as by her character, by her how she talks, how she speaks, how she walks, how she does things, not by just her looks. Because if you judge someone just how they look, it's not really good. Like imagine, let me give you an example. Yeah, this is a common a common example. If I, if a black person, suppose. Let's, let's put three people in line. This it's an example of three people. We've got a black person, we've got a white person, we've got a black person that's covered. Yeah. When they go that's covered obviously in clothing, yeah. When they go to a interview and they talk, they talk, who's likely to be most discriminated? Black of course. Yeah. Likely to be the most dis discriminated. Right? The white you get a job easily. But now when when the when how when he says Covered person's turn. What happened is, what happened is, they look at his skills. They look at what he has. Yeah, they don't just look at his looks. No, they look at his skill set. Like they look at his way of talking. They look at his way of doing things. And that's exactly what they they do. They wouldn't do that to the white. They wouldn't do the black. So now to my sisters out there, stay covered and wear something halal and wear to please Allah, not to please any man. Fine, you may wear something to show off your beauty to your husband, fine. But where if you got time, go to please Allah. Be dressed dress up to please Allah. Please share, like and subscribe.